Hey, welcome back. Okay, so this is probably the third time that I tried to record this tutorial without success. Uh, so I'm getting a little bit tired of it. Anyways, uh, I'm gonna uh, teach you how to retouch the lips. So we're gonna go from something like this to this. So let's begin. Okay, so the process goes pretty much like this. Uh, we have to make a selection around the lips and then we uh, retouch or we heal or we do the cloning and all that on the outside of the lip or outside of the lip color and then the inside of the lips and then we color them and then we, you know, do some dodging and burning and that's pretty much it. So let's begin. I'm going to hide all these layers that I already worked on. So I'm going to start from the beginning. Okay. And let me zoom in on the image okay uh, first we have to make a selection there are many ways that you can uh, go about making the selection I am going to use the pen tool and I recommend you start using the pen tool as soon as possible in your retouching training or exercises uh, I know it's a little bit complicated and not a lot of people like using it especially at the beginning because it's not very easy or uh, fast to master and in fact, I'm still I still consider myself pretty terrible at using the pen tool. You could also use the quick mask mode and just you know draw the mask around it or use you know whatever other methods you prefer. The pen tool is gonna be the most precise method, and it's also it, it's it's a selection or a path that you can save for later, and you can then revisit that selection and keep modifying it easily and then even making a selection with more or less feathering so it's very versatile for what it does and um, and for this purpose we're actually not gonna go uh, too com uh, doing too complex pads with it so definitely try using the pen tool so anyways for those who have never used it the pen tool basically is gonna create a pad and we create a pad by clicking on different points and making like a line that goes that goes connecting the dots and if you only click and let go it's gonna create a straight pad and if you click without letting go and dragging then you're gonna create a curve you can click and drag and create a curve and then when you're done with the selection you just go back to the point where you started and you close down the selection uh, you can press command or control on one of these anchor points to uh, modify them even further so I can in here modify the intensity or how far it goes with the um you know the bending and we can actually change and relocate them or we can just um click on an anchor point without pressing any other, other um, modification buttons and if that anchor point will go away we click on the selection where there is no point and we create a new one and again command and control to drag that point around and rotate it and do all the sort of stuff okay i'm gonna press delete and start doing this on the lips i start at one of these corners where we can see the folding of the of both lips um that's usually where i start when i do in um, my lip retouching so i'm just gonna start right here and I'm just gonna click and drag and it's it's almost like drawing around the lips i'm gonna go here and I probably went too far. I'm gonna go one step back. Uh, and click right here. And this can be a little bit tedious, especially to watch since you know you're just watching me doing this. But it won't take long. Here and um one thing you can do if you're just starting using the pen tool is um, only do like uh, a rough estimate or where of the final shape that it's gonna be and then you can keep adding or modifying or 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 changing these points individually once you get the basic shape uh, that's a good way of you not not going you know insane And you don't have to go like over the exact shape of the of the actual lips. That's the point 
of this of making this election is that we're gonna reshape them a little bit and redefine them so uh, feel free to not be as you know as as truthful to uh, to how the, the the lips actually go especially on places where we will call you know imperfection and such um i'm trying to align this right here okay um if I wasn't recording the tutorial, I will also be outlining the inside of the lips, but I think I can get away with it um, just for the sake of time. And the most important part is on the outside. Now let's go back in here to our pads uh, panel and let's make this and name it lips. I'm going to name it lips too because I already have a lips from where I did originally. That way, if we ever lose this pad, if we go or, or make a selection and we accidentally undo the selection, we can go back to this save pad and you know we don't have to redo the the pad again if we ever lose it. Okay. Um, so now that we have our outline, we can create uh, a selection. You, we can transform this into selection because pad or the pen tool is not only about selection, it's about, you know, it, you, there's several uh, things that you can do. Um, so now, now that we have, uh, we're still on the pen tool, we just right click right here near uh, our pad, and we're gonna select stroke pad. Oh no, no, I'm sorry, we're gonna select make selection. So we're gonna create a selection, and here you can select the, re the feathering of the selection, which means how soft it's gonna be around the edges. And I try not to leave it at zero because then it looks too perfect and it might look too fake for our liking. Uh, I try to make it at least one pixel, but you can experiment with this and see what you like. I'm gonna select OK. Now we have the inside of the lip selected. And because we have the inside of the lip, oh, well, let's start fixing the inside. Okay, I created a new layer. I'm gonna call it uh, lips. And I'm gonna actually call it darken because I'm gonna change this bl layer blending mode to darken. Basically, what we're gonna do is we're gonna limit the capacity of our healing and our cloning brush tools to only darken the lightest pixels because lipsticks is usually darker than the skin. That way, our changes are more minimal and are not as um, butchery as they will be if we make it all even so we're gonna have this layer on darken mode on also the um, actual brush is also gonna be in darken mode just to have that one extra step and again this means that whenever I'm sampling from where I'm sampling to it's only gonna dark uh, if if the pixels are lighter it's only gonna make the lighter pixels darker and the pixels are already darker which means that in this case the pixels are already have that color that I want that I'm cloning to or from, they're gonna remain intact. But you'll see what I mean. So I'm gonna sample from here, and I'm just gonna drag the color a little bit to the side. And we, we're gonna use both the healing brush tool and the um, cloning tool. With the healing brush, we're gonna worry more about the texture and not so much about the color, because the color is not gonna transfer very well. That's why we're gonna do both. But we do have to use both, because if you try to use uh, only say the heal the cloning brush tool, then um, the results are not gonna be as you know. I, I think I don't think they're gonna be as as good as as using both tools. That's why both tools exist. So I'm just sampling and just re redefining the edges a little bit. Fixing some of the textures, even some of the textures on the inside that I might want to, you know, retouch or modify a little bit. Okay, so we can see before and after. It's subtle, but that's how this works by making small, subtle increments. All right, now let's do um. Now let's do the clone tool. So now we're doing the clone tool, and I know the clone tool works by copying basically pixel by pixel over again but because we're working on the on the we, we're gonna be working on the darken mode uh, those changes are not gonna be as abrupt so here we go and the point of especially when you're using the clone tool 
um, that it doesn't have like all those computer algorithms as the healing brush tool is to make the source as as close as your um, you know as the place where that you're sampling to make them as phys as physically close close as possible so that we don't have a lot of you know these color variations and changes. So you're just going here. You just keep doing this. And uh, if, remember, if you already are familiar with the uh, dodging and burning, then you, you can do all those dodging and burning tricks after we're done with the overall recoloring of the lips. Um, so don't feel like you have to get all the lighting correctly on this step especially because we're gonna do a different step where we're gonna color the all, all the discoloration this is just to have like a you know a good base to work on all right so let's look again at the before and after it's looking a little bit better okay all right now let's work on the outside so we have the same selection i'm just gonna go to select inverse and now I have everything on the outside selected except for the inside color of the lips. Now I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to name this Lips uh, Lighten. And you know, oh, the main reason why we're doing this in all these different layers is because we're going to have a specific control of what we want. So if I want to reduce the opacity of one layer or one adjustment, I won't do it in all of them because they're going to be each on its own layer. And also because I need it in the lighting mode and I cannot, you know, by definition, I cannot have both lighting and darken mode on the same layer. I can with the brush, but not if I want to apply it to the entire layer. And I do want these two step, both the brush and the layer to be on, on either lighting or darken mode. And here we're going to basically do the same. We're going to start with the healing tool. And we're going to heal this in light and mode. And it's not going to make a lot of changes. Oops. I mean, it's still in darken. That's why. Where is it? Lighten. Okay. The changes, again, are going to be very subtle. That's the whole point. Is that by stacking by stacking um, subtle changes over and over at the end we get results that don't look you know cheap okay and again I'm fixing the texture and we still have some color leaking from from one part of the image to the other we're gonna fix that with um, the helium the clone tool I'm sorry um, so we got lighten, lighten, okay. And we start again as close as I can to my to my destination from the source. And we just start going at it. This goes a little bit farther. Mm 
I'm just cleaning up making sure I don't get any repeat patterns okay so now we have the uh, the outside and the inside and let me see if I can work a little bit more in here there we go we have the outside and the inside and that is our basic shape now we need to do yet another set so I'm gonna create a new layer I'm gonna call this lips color now um, I'm gonna inverse the selection again so because I want to work on the inside on the color and I'm just gonna start painting I sample sample a color from the lipstick and just start working on it and if you have in this case you have to take into consideration your makeup artist if you have a makeup artist that you were collaborating with and she's working with you also for her portfolio and stuff like that uh, make sure that her vision remains true so in here we have more reddish or more pinkish on the center and through towards the corner it gets a little bit more um, purple so we're gonna keep that into consideration when I'm doing this right now I am filling up just with a solid color just so I know where I'm coloring at but then afterwards I'm gonna go on with the hue and saturation layer and I'm gonna modify this color and and how it looks and I'm gonna do some advanced blending to it uh, so that we remain or we retain that you know the original color palette that we had and if this is all for you and and you don't need to deliver any images to any makeup artist or any collaboration like that then you can you know change the lips the lip color to what you want it's up to you but do take into account the theme that you work with so that it still remains you know their work so this is just enhancing and not necessarily you know changing okay now I think I can deselect so I'm gonna press command or control D to get rid of the selection and we're gonna change the blending mode of the leg so that it doesn't look this horrible you have different options that are gonna work when applying uh, basically applying digital maker over working with this kind of you know adjustments and um, basically it's gonna be darken multiply color burn sometimes linear burn or overlay and soft light if the makeup is lighter or it's not colors as intense or as, as pro profound then we can you can probably use lighten and screen so start working with this and just experiment with what you like I think for this one I like color burn better so I have color burn and now the intensity is too much I'm gonna reduce the intensity to about 50% and now we're gonna modify this color so on top of this lips color layer I'm gonna create a new hue and saturation layer and I'm gonna clip it by going on the properties panel on this button right here um, and we're gonna select it and now this little arrow appear next to the lips color layer which means that whatever I do it's only going to affect the lips and not anything else and here I'm gonna go to my reds and I'm gonna start making adjustments uh, in this uh, color burn blending mode changing the color of the lips doesn't work as well probably if you were to select something like overlay and then going here and changing you can make you know better changes um, but I didn't want to use overlay I want to use color um, color burn to remain that to keep the contrast so I'm just gonna go around and type in the adjustments that I had already selected so I'm going to increase this saturation Oops. here okay now I'm, I'm also going to reduce the opacity it is always a good thing to whatever you do in Photoshop when you're making this drastic adjustment to always tone down the opacity because it's very often that we go too far on our retouching on, on or on our you know recoloring then going not far enough it's almost always too far okay so now as you can see once I turn on 
and of the color layer it's affecting mostly you know the discolored parts and not the overall feel or look of of what the image was of what the original color was now we have one problem where the highlights are going um a little bit too much to pink instead of white as you can see on the original so for that i'm going to double click the lips color layer and in here we have the advanced blending dialog the blend if dialog what this basically says is that this layer in this case the color of the lips we can limit it to how it's gonna if it's gonna show or not depending on the luminosity of the layers below it or or of that layer in particular but because it's a solid color we're gonna focus on the layers below ba basically meaning that this highlight it's on the layers below that I painted. So if I can limit the color to appear on the highlights and I just keep dragging this, you're gonna start seeing how it's starting to go away. Now, to make this transition softer, I'm gonna press Option or Alt on the keyboard and then make drag this back to where it was. And I can go to preview the before and after. And it's just a subtle change, but it, it is important to make it look, you know, as though it was real as though I didn't do any coloring. <clears throat> okay, um, so now let me group these layers and I'm gonna, so I'm gonna select them all and then press Command or Control G to make them into a group and you can see the overall before and after. There is one final step though that we still have to make. Um, so I'm gonna expand these layers again and I'm gonna just do some highlight outlining that we lost when we did the healing and the um, when we did the healing and the cloning. So I'm gonna create a new layer. I'm gonna re I'm gonna grab the regular brush tool. I'm gonna grab this brush tool which is the one that has pressure sensitivity. I'm using a Wacom tablet. And I'm gonna reduce my size of my tip. I'm gonna go flow, I'm gonna go to around I don't know, I guess seven, five, it's fine. And opacity, I'm gonna go to, I guess, 40. I don't know, we'll see how it looks. And I'm gonna sample a, a, a color from the upper lip, and then I'm just gonna make it lighter. So I'm not selecting white, I'm just selecting a lighter color of that was originally there. Because there's usually a highlight in here around the lips, and we totally lost it when we did all our cloning and healing and I'm just gonna bring it back and as you see me doing this it's gonna look horrible and it's gonna look way over the top but then we're gonna fix it with our blending modes and you can totally do this without a Wacom tablet it's just probably gonna take you some more time and what I recommend you to do is go even lower on the opacity and the flow oh, so that the strokes on the on the mouse click uh, are not as harsh as they are going to be naturally as opposed to the Wacom tablet. And like I said, I am going over the top is because I am going to change the blending mode later um, to to make this, you know, obviously blend better. going back and forth with the majority of the effect being here at the top curvature of the lips and then it's all like fading away to almost not there by the way then we get here that's cool and now I'm gonna add some highlight in here as well Now just like we lost the highlights, we also lost the shadows. So on this same layer, I'm just gonna pick a dark color from there and now I'm gonna do the opposite and I'm gonna darken this. So I have to darken and I'm just gonna add some shadows in here. And 
And again, I know that this looks horrible right now. I'm gonna fix it in a couple minutes. I know it's starting. It's starting to look too much like an Illustrator or something. Um, over here and this because I'm doing it all on its own layer I can even if after I do the blending mode if I don't like how intense it is I can go back and reduce its intensity from the layer without uh, affecting or reducing or removing any of the other adjustments that I made uh, let me go back in history a little bit there you go mm. Okay, so now I'm gonna change this to either overlay or soft light. So we go to overlay, see how that looks. Soft light, I think I like the soft light better. And it's just an added, uh, you know, an added highlight and definition just to make it pop even a little bit better. Now let's zoom out of the image again. And I'm actually, I'm not liking this area right here very much. I'm gonna have to um redo it but you get the idea um this is the before and the after and as a bonus this exact same technique also works on the eyebrows so you can see what i did on the eyebrows before and the after the same technique making an outline fixing the outside then fixing the inside then doing a little bit of coloring if you need to but anyways this is how to retouch or redefine the lip line and thank you for watching